Um, I'm a passionate believer in freedom of speech, but not if that freedom of speech allows somebody to racially vilify or humiliate or marginalise or isolate a particular group. I'm never comfortable with, with a particular marginalised section of society being <coughs> spoken about in that way. Do you think part of the reason why you can't sympathise or recognise... No, so I didn't what's, sympathise. But, but, but you can't seem to understand how that would cause enormous discomfort for somebody and they would withdraw from public life. Do you think that's because you're a white, able-bodied, heterosexual no, male? No, I don't think... Aren't quotas a form of reverse discrimination against those in the majority who have been selected on merit? Let's uh, hear first from the women on the panel, Lisa Wilkinson. Um, it's interesting that that question comes from a man, because maybe you'd have to be a woman to get, you know, exactly what this is all about. Tony Abbott said there's a lot of them knocking on the door. Well, Tony Abbott needs to understand they're not there to sell Avon. <laughs> They've actually got talent that needs to be recognised. Do you think the on reason that? for that might be it, because we haven't had enough female politicians over the last century who've put forward women's issues and made sure that things like childcare are looked after and uh, domestic violence issues are, are raised well, and I don't all think of the things that are much more female focused issues. Exactly. North American. Canadian and North American make up much more than the so-called Chinese, which includes Hong Kong, Singapore, um, Malaysia. But, but they're all getting clumped together, obviously, because visually... Well, it's a bit of media reporting.